So we just spent about a week or so in the Algarve. We spent a few days in Albufeira and then we went across to the most southern westerly point at Sagres. We visited the fort there and stayed there for a couple of days. And a really nice area, but what we found was it was almost like stepping back into England because there were so many English down there. All the way down through France, Spain and Portugal, we've seen a lot of um, German, Portuguese, obviously there's a lot of French campervans through France, but very little English. And then all of a sudden, getting into the Algarve, and it just seemed like everybody was British. And uh, it was literally like going back to England. And particularly down in the Algarve, there's a lot of retired people down there. Obviously, uh, you know, spent most of the winter down there, I guess. And we bumped into people and spoke to them. And there's people that go back to the Algarve every year, every winter, and spend two or three months down there. So it was quite interesting, but obviously that's not really what we want to experience. You know, we come to these countries in Europe because we want to see a different side. I don't want to go to the typical UK holiday resort destinations. That's not what we're looking for. So we're heading back up through Portugal now. We're still on the west coast. Uh, we're going to go back up and see if we can't find some places that are a little bit more interesting to have a look at. We're taking a route back up the west coast of Portugal. We're leaving the fortress at Sagres and traveling 250 kilometers north towards Lisbon. We're actually gonna stay in a Portuguese national park in an area called Setúbal. A really beautiful picturesque area. And we picked a lovely little campsite right on the coast. On the drive up to Setúbal, we decided to stop off for some lunch just south of Sines. It wasn't one of our best locations, it was overlooking the nearby power station and the docks. But then just a little bit further north of that, we come across this absolute gem of a place. So we just come over that bridge there in the distance where you can see those few cars. And we notice this huge great big castle up on the hill here, right on the top of this little village here. It looked really picturesque, so we just turned off the main road there and driven up to the top. And I'm actually standing right on the castle now, looking down. Amazing view up here. Inside the castle walls here, they've taken the main building and created this luxury hotel. Really beautiful inside. There's the main restaurant on the ground floor there. Some of the rooms above. And then this is the garden area. And you can see there swimming pool, patio area and some lounges in the distance. Lovely location. Fancy staying here for a couple of days, babe. <laughs> so 
there's where we were just a second ago. That's the hotel up there inside the castle grounds. And we were just looking down here just a minute ago. And then along here, along this boardwalk, there's some beautiful little restaurants along here. And we're gonna stop for a bit of lunch. The rest of the drive down to Sechibal was absolutely beautiful. The sun was shining through the trees and as soon as we got to our campsite we couldn't resist cracking out the bikes and taking a ride up the coastal road. There's a lovely stretch of beach only about two and a half kilometres along the coast from where we're currently parked. So we thought we'd have a nice little leisurely ride down there for a spot of lunch. And there's a couple of little viewing points just on the way that overlook the bay here. So we're just taking a little five minute breather. <laughs> We stayed for a couple of days in Sechibel. It's such a beautiful place. Golden sands and crystal clear waters. The next leg of our trip takes us through the heart of Lisbon and over the 17 kilometre long Vasco da Gama bridge on our way to Cascais. So here where we parked last night, we're just north of Lisbon on the coast. There's a huge car park here. There's about four or five restaurants here quite a few vans of different types, a couple of camper vans and some normal van conversions. This is a good one for the surfers, really nice surfing beach, you can see the guys are already out there, it's early in the morning and they're already up and surfing. A couple of VWs and a couple of transit vans. It's a classic example of a free car park, there's no restrictions for parking here. There was about nine or ten vans parked overnight. And you get these little spots all up and down the coast. So we're just parked in that little car park over there you can see a couple of vans there you might be able to see the sprint over the back of it there's a lovely stretch of beach here really rocky sort of area a couple of people nearly got caught out by that wave there <laughs> it's like a bit of a mound on the beach there where if the sea gets over the top of it comes rushing in quite quickly. It's catching a few people out. So after a short overnight stop at the beach near Cascades, we continue our journey north towards the city of Tomar, where we meet up with fellow van lifers, Steve and Jill. So this is one of the best things that I like about van life, is the community and fellow van lifers. Steve is one of the viewers of our channel and he's watched a few of our build videos and that's if you like, it's given them a little bit of inspiration and they've now done their own self-build 
And I don't think, Steve, you didn't have any experience before. No, I've no engineering background. I just yeah, yeah just, and um, just by watching the channel and picking up some advice and bits and pieces, give you a little bit of confidence to do your own van. To do that, and in certain areas, particularly, you know, the insulation and the the wiring, etc., have, have been uh, thanks to your videos. Yeah. And Steve contacted me via the YouTube channel and just happened to be very close to where we were in Portugal and said, look, if you're in the area, pop along, can we meet up? And we came to the campsite yesterday, parked up, and we had a lovely evening yesterday with Steve and his partner Jill, had a few beers and just chatted about van life. It's really good. It's a good evening, yeah. yeah nice really night, good. yeah. Nice to meet everybody. Is it all right if we just have a quick look in with your van? Pleasure. So yeah, have a wander around. I'll, I'll, I'll step out of the way and, and let you have a... See, Steve's built a shower, and you've got your toilet in there as well, Steve. Yeah, there's set of toilets in there, and there's a. It's got like a little wet room with a cassette yeah, toilet in it's there. Got the, the shower tray that drains out. Yeah. Nice little kitchen sink. Was that an old jam pan? Was it, Steve? There was, yeah, there was a jam pan there, yeah. and the the worktop was an old coffee table. Yeah, that looks really there, good. There, we, we sounds it down. And, and then you've got like this sort of U-shaped seating area at the back, where these these bench seats obviously pull out. Lay the cushions flat and that forms your bed and then you sleep front to back, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Long that. ways. Yeah. yeah. It helps comfortable. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of rooms, great big bed, so it's got this beautiful yes. tongue and groove ceiling. And I love all the little details like the fairy lights and the bunting and just gives the whole van a little bit of character, doesn't it? That was yeah, that's um that was my wife Jill. She's uh she likes interior design so She's done a really, really good job now. You've yes. done a brilliant job there, Steve. It looks fantastic. So this is Steve's van. It's a Peugeot Boxer. It's a little bit squarer than the Sprinter. The Sprinter tends to be a little bit narrow at the top. This one's probably got a little bit more space in it. And I do like these graphics that Steve's put on the side. Really nice. You've got the, uh, the gas it uh, adapter there. For the oh, refillable for the, gas. Yeah, yeah, refillable LPG, yeah. And the three-way fridge on this side. Yeah. And then you've got the bike rack on the back. And the bike rack. Um, which is sitting on your towing hitch. That's on the tow bar mount. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, and the, the, the bike, the bike rack enables to swing and tilt, which enables you to open the back door while the bikes are still fitted, which is very useful for accessing tables and chairs, etc. Yeah, it's a lovely van, really nice, well done. Our trip to Tomar would not be complete without a visit to the Roman Catholic convent, the Convent of Christ. It sits on top of the hill overlooking the city and is absolutely stunning. We just walked up the steep hill from the town and we're just at the entrance of the Convent of Christ. This is supposed to be a really beautiful place in here, so expecting some fantastic architecture. So let's go and have a look.
There's a huge great big convent here and the architecture is absolutely stunning. It's really worth a visit. It's only six euros to get in. So in English money, it's about five pound. So it's a real bargain, to be honest. You could spend quite a bit of time here as we have, having a look around. There's also the castle to have a look around as well. There's a castle wall walk all the way around the edge and there's some fantastic panoramic views of the city below. It is really worth a visit. So on this drive back from southern Portugal, we've met some wonderful people and we've seen some absolutely stunning locations. And I hope that you'll see from this video, and I think that you'll agree with me, that Portugal is a beautiful country to visit. best is yet to come. We visit Porto and the Sanderman vineyards and we drive all the way up the Douro Valley. It's absolutely stunning scenery and you won't want to miss that. So make sure that you subscribe, please do hit the notification bell and if you've liked these series of videos give them a thumbs up and share them on social media. Thanks for the support guys. Cheers!